Hello and welcome to Senior Moments. This is a program for and about seniors. We'll be highlighting some products and services that we hope will make your life better, finding ways to enhance your life, and also save money and maybe even make some money. So let's get we're going right away. My guest today is Carrie Weiss from Viridian. Carrie, thank you for coming in today. Nice to be here with you. Okay. So Carrie, I'm interested to find out what's going on in the electric business because I get confused when I understand that a company like yours can actually save me money on my electric bill and yet you're not an electric company. That's right. Uh, I'm with Viridian Energy and you have a choice as a consumer of who supplies your electricity to National Grid. We all have National Grid as our utility and we have a choice of the supplier. So there's a lot of information out there and it's really sometimes challenging to sift through it, but on National Grid's website you can see which suppliers they've approved. Okay, so in other words, to do this you have to go through a process to be approved. It's not anybody can decide to sell electricity to their neighbor. No, no, we're approved by the utility company. That's quite an involved process to make sure that the companies are stable, that they're getting energy from um, places, the correct places. So, yeah, it's a process. So now, would, would you say it, it almost sounds to me like, is it a difference between retail and wholesale? Could, would that be an appropriate description? In other words, do you get a better buy because we're part of a wholesale group or is this straight retail like we buy from the electric company? Is there any correlation in there? Uh, the electric company, there, there is a correlation. We're a broker, so we source our energy from U.S. green energy sources, wind and solar, a lot, of, a lot from Pennsylvania, a little mm -hmm. bit of hydro from Canada. So the more customers we have, the more buying power we have, and the more green energy we can put on the grid. National Grid sources uh, its energy from uh, other countries and from fossil fuels, coal plants, nuclear plants. But it is, there is a, a benefit to buying in volume. Okay, so then your goal is to buy green. Would that be the, the ultimate goal and, or as much as you can? So anything that has a green footprint, you're looking for that and you can bring it into the area essentially uh, yeah. in some way. Yeah, we like to offer choices. We have a solar program now that the installation is free for the customer. But as far as the electricity, which we're talking about now, uh, we source, you can do 50% over the state regulation. State requires 10% green anyway, that's the minimum, from all of their sources. We add 50% to that for our basic product, and then we also have 100% green energy product, which you can buy, which is a, a little bit more than what you might be paying now with National Grid. So when, when you say product, you're saying just kilowatt hours? Is that, would that be the product you actually sell on the electric side of it? Yeah, we're, we're really brokers for the product. We mm -hmm. source the product and then we deliver it to the grid, or they deliver it to the grid. Is it reasonable to give a, a number on that? Like, for example, if National Grid is charging you X number of dollars or X number of cents per kilowatt hour, can you usually reduce that? Or do you run the same price as them you, and give the opportunity to buy green? Well, the beauty with our company is because we don't do we don't spend a lot of money on advertising through TV or radio. You've probably gotten postcards in the mail, door to door, people mm -hmm. knocking. Um, my company doesn't spend a lot of money on that. They they keep the cost down by doing direct marketing through people. <clears throat> oh, okay, so in other words, you're you're a representative of the company. Uh, for example, I did get a call just yesterday asking what my wanting to put uh, solar power on my roof. Mm -hmm. But the, the callers were from India. And, you know, I, I said, first, I'm not in a position to get solar, but uh, thank you very much for calling. So they actually have people who do that in one way is to call people all over the country, I presume. Mm -hmm. In your case, what, do you stay relative, can you stay locally or can you provide electric service to anybody in the country? We can pro provide electric service to the 16 states that Viridian is approved in, mm -hmm. and we have electricity in 11 of those states. We also have natural gas product, which is not a green energy, but we use the, some of the income to find better, safer ways to refine and deliver the natural gas. Mm -hmm. So this, we're in 16 states, but the company's young. They're only five years old, mm -hmm. and they're adding states every year, and they're planning to go across the U.S. and then global. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. 
So what is the, the uniqueness here is then, it's the way that you get the word out. So you're, you imagine first you'd go to your neighbors and friends. Is mm -hmm. that true? That's true, yeah. <clears throat> and how long have we been in doing this now as a, as a business? Uh, per, I've been in for about a year and a half. Okay. Now you're, you're a, you own your own business. You're an independent contractor, is that I right? I do, yeah. And so you, you work with Viridian and, and they provide the service and you go bring the customers in. Mm -hmm. How's that working out? Uh, great. It's, it's really easy to get started. It uh, doesn't cost very much to join the company. There's a small startup fee that includes all the training. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, local support for training, phone calls and meetings. Mm -hmm. And then the people that brought me in, I, I always have them as a resource. They've been in longer and know more about the business. Okay. And there's plenty to study as for, you know, emails and... All right. So the, your training and just your experience, when you started out, you knew nothing? about electric I other knew. than paying your bill? I didn't <laughs> even know that Massachusetts had been deregulated since 1997. I knew yeah. nothing. I hadn't made a choice myself. I didn't know I had a choice, really. It had been on the radio, and I just didn't really listen to what they were saying. So. I know. Well, you know what's interesting, and, I, and I'd love to see this go the way of cable, because you think, like, we only have two choices in this area. You have Comcast and you have Verizon. Mm -hmm. But in this case now, we're going to see a lot of people going out there and try to make the best product. But now, I guess getting back to the question, and tell me if this is a hard question, by working with your company, does the consumer save money like by kilowatt hours, or is, that's what, that would be my interest. Is that factual? Or? Yeah, they save money over time. National Grid, their basic rate is adjusted every six months. And within that six months, like we got hit pretty hard last winter with a 37% increase for National Grid. But within that six months, there are different rates each month. So it might be 8% one month, 12% the next, and it will average out to a six month average. So our rates are, what we're doing is promoting uh, locking in. The company was started by Michael Falquist. He's an insurance actuary and he's a genius. He, he's looking out, he knows the energy market, um, highly skilled, highly trained, and he's looking out for the customer's interest. His whole premise is, um, power with a purpose. He wants people to have less expensive energy for the planet to use more green energy and less of the fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. But by doing mm -hmm. that, he knows customers want, they don't want to think about their energy bill every month. They would like to lock in and leave it at a certain rate. So that's why we have a three-year fixed rate right now. Oh, all right. So let, <clears throat> that, would get, that gives me an idea now. So if I have a, I know what my bill is. I can look at my bill and see what they're charging me today per kilowatt hour, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So from a budgetary point of view, working with your company, I can plan out for three years, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that if it goes up, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna change. In other words, right. you're buying into the future. Right. And so you're doing that buying for me, kind of like the stock market, I guess. Right, exactly. You're We're going out and you're, you're grabbing a bunch of electrical energy. Yep. Um, and well, it is much. It's just like the stock market is because a lot of uh, mutual funds, for example, will only use, you know, green or they they won't take certain types of uh, companies in their portfolios. Mm -hmm. So that, that's really an interesting correlation. I'm getting to understand it now better. The uh, the marketing side of it, <clears throat> it and in the same way, I, I imagine you build a business just like any other business, mm -hmm. except you're not making. The enormous investment that uh, you know, uh, mom and pop's electric store. If they had to put a store downtown and people would come in to get them, you just go out and get the people. Right, and the the beauty of this business is it's network marketing. <clears throat> and for anybody that's been in network marketing, the hard part about it is the product. How much do you buy and store mm -hmm. and deliver and when people stop using the product, you need to bring in more people. Well, people don't stop using electricity. Mm -hmm. So once you have them as a customer, we have a 99% retention rate of our customers because when they move, they tend to re-sign with us right. because they like the product and we educate them on the benefits to the planet. So we have programs for veterans and, and it's a great second job for retired people, mm -hmm. school teachers, real estate teachers, because they like to educate people. And that's really half mm -hmm. our job is just explaining to people that they have a choice. Okay. People in real estate, um, <clears throat> all kinds of financial people. You really don't, ha you don't have to have a, an energy background or a technical background to do this business. In fact, the friend that brought me in was a preschool teacher. 
Mm -hmm. And she's doing quite well in the business, too. So I, what I presume is if you needed technical assistance, for example, if someone has a technical question, you have a resource that you can go to who is, who is far more experienced in the technical side of this mm -hmm. than you. And the other question before we go, you mentioned solar. So your company also provides solar services? Yeah, we're partnered with Solar City that was started by Elon Musk, who's the founder of Tesla Motors and the private rocket ship that actually mm. <laughs> Oh yeah, Elon. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a genius. So he founded Solar City, and his goal is to get the country completely off the grid with solar someday. Mm -hmm. And we partnered with him because he offered a product which met Viridian's mission, which is affordability. Um, really, solar is expensive if you go out and purchase it yourself. But they made it. Solar Study made it affordable through Viridian by making it free to install, and then you pay for the energy that's generated. But it's still going to be a lower rate over time, and it's 20 years fixed, so you don't have to worry about the the volatile market that you were talking about. When going you say up and 20 down. years fixed, what is that on the on the the rate you're paying electric? Or? Yeah, on the solar panels, the energy that's generated, the insurance maintenance, and the price per kilowatt hour is all fixed for 20 years, so okay. no worries. So, for example, if I have a house and I, I, first of all, I'm thinking maybe I want <clears throat> to try solar, and I meet you at a coffee shop and you say, oh, yeah, we can provide you with solar. Would, would somebody come down the house and do a, a, uh, an audit? <clears throat> How would they... How would they decide to do that? How would that happen? Yeah, there's a couple of, they use Google Earth to look at your house to see which way it's oriented, how much sun you're gonna get, how mm -hmm. big your roof is, and they'll actually do a layout for you in an email. So wow. the beginning of the process is very simple. It's just a couple of emails, uh, your annual electric estimated usage, because that's what they base the number of panels that they're mm -hmm. gonna put on your house. And then if you're approved, which you know one in 10 or 15 houses in Massachusetts are approved, um, you can't have a lot of shade around. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing can disqualify you. But once you're approved, then they do send somebody out and it takes an hour to walk around the house and, and um, figure out how they're going to install it and how many panels. So now you just said one out of 10? Um, roughly would be one eligible? out of Yeah, one out of 10 or 15. Not everybody qualifies because that's why we're trying to get as many people as possible to look into it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are thinking about, you know, putting it off and waiting, but really you may not even qualify. So why not go do a little research and find out? Okay. And then if you qualify now, because still there's still rebates, uh, federal rebates, I there understand, are. right? Yeah. And that helps Solar <clears throat> City make it free for the installation, those rebates. So when the rebates change, our programs may change too. The free mm -hmm. installation we have now is is we have that now, but it may not be available for okay. forever. So the free installation really is that, that instead of the homeowner receiving the rebate from the feds, mm -hmm. your company, they sign over the, as I understand that they sign over that, yep. and then you do all of the installation, take care of all the maintenance. Yep. Now, in, in Massachusetts, for example, there can't be much opportunity to sell back uh, electric, like some of the some of the southern states, sell a lot of the electricity back because they get, you know, so many days of sun. Right, right. The that's an interesting question because uh, first thing National Grid does is put a new meter on your house because the meters we have now don't even spin backwards to give you the credit. Right. So <laughs> when you get solar installed, they'll they'll change that meter out. But in Massachusetts, um, it can be 60, 70, 80 percent of your coverage. It's it's rarely a hundred or more than a hundred. But what you're doing is locking in a good energy rate, and it also helps for resale. When people see mm -hmm. solar panels on a house, it makes a big difference because they know their bill's going to be lower and they're helping the environment. Now, when you mentioned 20 years, is the life expectancy of the panels about 20 years? Um, that I don't know. I'd have mm -hmm. to check into that. All right, yeah. And then who knows what technology we may have. You may want to upgrade or you could buy out the panels. They also have plans within that 20 years if you want to purchase them, and then you get the credits and you own them. That's available too as an option. Well, down in Florida, I got a big lecture on that from a, somebody because they said <clears throat> their, their idea was not to buy them because just what you said, because the technology is changing so fast, five years from now, you may own these things. Right. And something comes along that's totally different. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about them. You kind of can just go along with the change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Now, from the, the business side of it, <clears throat> What do you think is the, and you mentioned the word network marketing that, that has a, a lot of people, 
especially older people. We come from the age when uh, network marketing was a dirty word. You know, people were afraid of network yeah. marketers for a while, <clears throat> and with good cause, because in the 60s, 70s, and then in the 80s, I noticed everything changed. Mm -hmm. Most companies, most corporations use network marketing to get their product out. You know, whether it's individuals or whether it's sub-companies. But network marketing now is a different animal than it was. And so I really call, I've talked to a lot of people and it's really about relationships now. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I see your job is to actually build relationships. So I'm thinking of what um, Michael Falquist, he sees you out there promoting his company. Mm -hmm. And so even if you come, if you talk with me and I'm not eligible, if I thought you were professional and I liked you, when I am eligible and when I'm thinking about this product, I hopefully will call you. And I think that's what mm -hmm. we mean by network marketing. Right. And you also uh, may think of some friends or family here right. and in the other states mm -hmm. that we're in that you might refer to me. Uh, one thing I really like about Viridian Energy is I've been in other network marketing in the past that was product-based, mm -hmm. and it can be really tricky. After a while, your friends and family kind of look at you like, oh, here she oh, comes here she again comes, yeah. <laughs> with, Close the door. with the product <laughs> that she's trying to, oh, yeah. Oh, no, stop. But, <laughs> <laughs> with Viridian, there's such a huge market. We just opened up in Texas, and mm. Texas is an absolutely enormous market for us. It's a great market, yeah. Yeah, and they're also very friendly and not skeptical, and they're very network marketing friendly, so mm. we have people down there right now building a market there. But with uh, with this business, I, I haven't alienated so far friends or family like some sometimes happens with network marketing because there's such a huge market. If people aren't interested, I just keep moving. Talk, oh, yeah. Talking to other yeah. people and not, there's no price. And also for coming into the business, we're actually careful about who we bring in. We don't try to adopt everybody that we meet on the street. Mm, sure. Because it's, uh, you have to be interested in the energy market. You have to mm -hmm. do a little research and it's not for everybody. It's great for business people and people that want to make some money on the side. Mm -hmm. And doesn't, you know, you don't have to be highly educated in any particular field to get into it. That's the beauty of it, because the training's all on videos and, and emails, so. But I think the idea of, <laughs> as you talk, the idea of being able to lock into a price, I would say the, I, I think the skepticism comes in, and, and I can almost hear people, I've, I've been in marketing for a long time, so I hear people saying things like, uh, yeah, but what if the price goes down? Mm-hmm. You know. uh, we have a rebate at the end of the three years. If you sign up for the three years, you mm -hmm. know, we have other options. We have a rebate if the National Grid basic service was lower than Viridian over the three years, we're going to give you a rebate. Okay, so, so you get some percentage of the, so you're actually sharing in the, the lower price? Right. Yeah, we're doing that. We <clears throat> want people to feel comfortable for, with what they're signing up for. Sure. We want happy customers. Yeah. And so the rebate, which we don't really honestly think we're going to be paying out because energy just keeps creeping up every year. And also the way that they forecast the energy in Viridian, they, they really know what they're doing. But they've offered the rebate to make people feel more comfortable about signing up for the three-year term. Well, that, no, that makes sense to me now. But, but at the same point, it, it's highly unusual on how technology changes totally all of a sudden for prices to go down. Right. Because I've noticed over the years that if a price goes up, it seldom goes down. Mm -hmm. It's like food. You know, it's funny when there's all sorts of high gas prices, food goes up. But when gas goes down, food never goes down. It just keeps yeah. itching up. And I think, I think power is the same way. Mm -hmm. It might go down for a few months, but over, over time, if you look at the numbers, it's, it's like, gradually yeah. gone up. Yeah. And it's, so it is really a kind of a stock market process that we're, we're becoming involved in. And it almost sounds like we have a little bit more control over our energy life than we do with a national company that uh, just sells us electric at whatever price they want to sell it. Right, yeah. You know, that they can stay within the federal guidelines or the state guidelines. Yeah, if you, if you really want to investigate, you can sign up for a different product. I mean, different companies have different terms and conditions for joining and, mm -hmm. and unjoining, shall I say. Yeah. But the, um, you can switch and see who has a lower rate and how long the term is. And there's the approved suppliers are on National Grid's website. <clears throat> well, that's an interesting thing. Let's say I signed up for three years mm -hmm. 
And then my friend next door comes over to me and says, oh, I'm working with XYZ company. <clears throat> Can I drop you? Yes. Or is there a penalty? There's, there are charges involved based mm. on how long you've been in the plan, um, whether you're residential or small commercial, and they're in the contract. So you'll know up front what it would cost if you left during the contract and when. So it is kind of like a telephone contract, you know, if you want to buy your way out, they, yeah. you can buy your way out. Like the phone plans, and you can say, well, if it's, if it's say, $50 to get out of this plan, but I'm going to save 50 over two months, yeah. maybe I'll do it anyway. So. Okay, no, it sounds, it sounds interesting. It, it, the more I, I hear about this, it just, I keep seeing consumer control. Mm -hmm. And now the other thing I think that's really interesting about what you're saying about your company, you're going out and you're searching green energy systems, where to get more green energy from, yeah. who's selling it. And this can only improve the amount of suppliers mm -hmm. because the demand, and that's your, what you were saying earlier, the more people that get involved, the more demand you have for a green supplier. Right, right. And so people are going to... What's your uh, take? How long will it take before we get off fossil fuels? Oh, that's a good question. I'd say 30 mm -hmm. years. We have cities like Burlington, Vermont, that are completely green, and it's a growing trend across the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read a publication called Green Energy Times, and cities, uh, municipalities are trying to do that themselves. So the more the more small pieces of it happen, the faster the whole big picture is going to come. Sure. Through. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, one of our guests was he goes around to the cities and the towns and he helps them audit, you know, to, to drop their footprint mm -hmm. and to do whatever they can to save money and to change things around. And that's oh, he, that's a good. It's service. a national company, but, mm -hmm. and, but he deals just with uh, different companies. So so I think the future is looking really interesting. Now, I, I'd like to say that if more people became involved in green, we could actually make it 20 years that we would be out of it. I think that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the solar, the way solar is growing. And we just opened up solar in New Hampshire. And you wouldn't think New Hampshire would be a good solar market. But the next one we're looking at is Maine. And again, that's because the costs of energy is so high up in those areas. But at, down the road, certainly with all the solar, if you look along Route 90, National Grid is putting up their own solar panels mm -hmm. all, all along the throughway. So, oh I, no, I think I think the potential, and I think if the technology can just catch up a little bit, we're going to have some big changes. Because I know here in Haverhill they're talking about putting a solar farm in, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> my generation really is the people who are responsible for making those big mountains of landfill mountains <laughs> because we threw everything away into a landfill yeah. and there was no no thought of uh, maybe metals we would take and we would uh, do something with metals but everything else was thrown in and now we get mm. these big mounds and if they can be done so they're aesthetically pleasing I think it'd be great to have all that stuff covered with the solars and just uh, upgrading your own home electricity <clears throat> account to a green energy is 50 times as effective as recycling for saving carbon from the atmosphere mm -hmm. 50 times just making that two-minute switch to a green supplier for your electricity and controlling what you're paying mm hmm so that's that's your that doesn't sound like a very difficult product to offer, and it's simple to buy because there's really no money transferred here, is there? No, no, it's a win-win. It's just a paper transaction. So yeah. So all that you do is just sign up. As I mean, it's almost like people change uh, telephone services. Mm -hmm, it's the same exactly. way, all computerized. And then you would would you send them a bill? Your company sends a bill, or does National Grid continue to send the bill? National Grid still bills because they're still going to handle service and delivery. And on the <clears throat> page two of your bill, it says supply. And if it says basic, that means National Grid's chosen for you. When you sign up with Viridian, within a billing cycle, 45 days or so, it'll say Viridian Energy Stamford, Connecticut. That's the only change that you'll see. That okay. and your bill will go down a little bit. Right. And I mean, still the standard state taxes and all the stuff that goes into, like, a, that, that'll that still be there. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about is actual usage cost. Usage cost. Kilowatt hour. cost, yeah. 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 And then, I mean, the other thing is, do you do anything with uh, conservation? Does your company 
uh, promote conservation practices? They're a huge sustainability company. They, uh, they write an annual report on sustainability projects. We just sent a team to Nicaragua to help out by installing electricity in 40 homes. So we do projects across the globe. We use the, the income that we have to, to do a lot of good across the world. We did 50 um, Earth Day projects where we cleaned up rivers and a lot of mm. them were local New England because the company's in Connecticut and expanded through New England. We're also on the West Coast and, and growing, but there's a, a lot, the main part of the business is in the Connecticut and New England area. So they do a lot of sustainability projects. All right. Mm. And the only difference is that they don't hire the people like they come up with contractors or consultants like you, which makes it really, you know, the more I think about that, the more interesting it is. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, yeah, these people love what they do. So right. they're they're very willing to invest their time and energy. So what's your next move? My next move is to bring in a few good people and train them because the part of the business I love is the mentoring. So I have plenty of customers. It doesn't take long to get a good batch of customers mm -hmm. <laughs> in this business. And I also would like to. Uh, start a more local meeting. We have a few local meetings, but I'd like to start my own. So. For, for training? For training, training meetings. Training purposes? Yep, and inspiration. Okay, so. good. Oh, and, and I think that's important, and in the, in the whole side of it. I, I thought it was a very interesting uh, product, and it, it actually sounds like fun. It's not like heavy duty. No. And you're not carrying around a little bag of products. No. You know, like the full of brush man. <laughs> You know. My garage isn't full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your garage is full. Somebody's, mm. anything going across the way, you can, uh, mm. you can claim. Yeah. Well, all right. I think I learned something. And when I started, I didn't know much about it. And I hope everybody at home has got some information that they can use and make decisions about their decision about how power goes into their house and how much they can pay for it. So I really want to thank you for coming out. You're Thanks welcome. a lot, Gary. Mm -hmm.